Thanks for tuning in for Arlington County's latest live chat Q&A here on Facebook Live. Um, we're here today to talk about a topic that is very near and dear to a lot of Arlingtonians, and that is recycling, and specifically glass recycling, because we recently had a change in the way that the county handles that. Correct. So I'm here today. My name is Ben Hampton. I'm here with our Solid Waste Bureau Chief, Eric Grabowski, and we're going to talk all about recycling and glass recycling um, now that we have that change in, in how we're handling that. So Eric, I was wondering, just to get us started here, um, can you walk us through the recent decision change in how the county is approaching handling uh, um, glass recycling? Okay. So two weeks ago, the county board voted to change the county code, which enabled the county manager's designee to remove items from the recycling list for the residential um, service area. And so we made a decision based on removing glass for a variety of reasons. An effective one August, the county will remove glass from one of the items on the recycle material list. So we're encouraging people to do that now. What we've, we've established a new glass hierarchy. We want people to buy less glass. If they do have glass, we want them to try to repurpose it. If there are jars, they can put nails or whatever they're doing in it. Um, thirdly, we like to take glass to the recycling drop-off centers. There are two of those located in the county. And then lastly, we'd like you, instead of putting in your blue recycling cart, we'd like you to start putting glass in your black trash cart. So walk us through the reasoning behind okay. why we can't recycle glass anymore. I think that's something that people have um, grown accustomed to right. and, and value. So what's the, what are the economics behind that? For a long time, we thought the material recovery facilities, those are the MRFs, where the, actually all the recycled material ends up and is as processed into various commodities. So they would take glass, but what has happened is glass hasn't taken off as a commodity, and so it really has no value. And so what has been decided is the material recovery facilities are actually taking glass and disposing of it in landfills and not recycling it because there aren't close enough recycling markets here to the Washington, D.C. area that allows it to be economically viable to actually manage glass that way. So the MRFs who receive the material are actually taking it on a roundabout way to a landfill. So this decision was partly was, one, we could save money if we handle it differently, but more importantly, if we were to set out these glass-only containers that are recycling drop-off centers, we can ensure that material is actually going to be recycled. We have partnered with Fairfax County, who invested in a glass crushing and processing machine, and so we're delivering glass. We've delivered almost 20 tons of glass over the last two months to that facility, and they are taking that material and crushing it to sand and like a number eight stone where they're using it for various construction projects in Fairfax County. So the glass collected in the drop-off containers is in fact being recycled where the glass put in a blue cart taken to a material recovery facility is ending up in a landfill. So that's why we made that decision. If it's taken to the waste energy facility, it actually ends up in an ash monofill, which is another landfill. So it was actually done cheaper in that regard. So if you put in a blue cart or the black cart, it ended up in a landfill. And if you put in a black cart, we actually save money. So that's the reason we made that decision. I think that's a really hard habit for people to break and to think about putting what was previously a recyclable in a place where they know it's going to go in a landfill, but it's going to go in a landfill anyway. Exactly. And we have found that Arlington residents are very smart. And if we are able to effectively communicate with them, they can change behavior. When we added the blue cart for single stream, they adapted very well. When we added the organics cart to collect organics, they've adapted very well. And I'm seeing already that with, since we made it known that these drop-off centers are collecting glass independently, the amount of material we're actually collecting over the last, even last week or so, has increased dramatically. So people understand it. We are going to take an opportunity to send a letter to every residential customer here in the next couple weeks and explain why and the details about glass. And then we're going to follow it up with a recycle right brochure, mm. further explaining how to recycle right here in Arlington County. Okay. Uh, before we move on, because I want to talk about, walk through the details of what people should do with their glass now. I just want to remind folks who are watching that if you're watching this live, um, please send in your questions. We've got, the, we've got Facebook pulled up right here, and we can ask your questions uh, right here in real time. But I do want to make sure that we walk through some of the details also of what people should do with glass. You already mentioned okay. it once, but I just want to go through um, some more okay. of the specifics of that. What, what do you do with the glass that you have? So I'm going to start earlier than that because, again, okay. I think the reality is for our recycling purposes, glass is a difficult commodity. So we want to first minimize the amount of glass we're actually introducing the system mm -hmm. altogether. And that starts with you buying less glass. Mm -hmm. So I would like drinking Coke. So 
in a, you know, I preferred it in a Coke bottle, but the reality is aluminum is what I buy it in now because glass is hard to manage. Hmm. Um, so I would ask you first to just stop buying glass if possible. Again, if that's something you want and there are certain things that you buy are in glass, that's fine because now we have an alternative for that. If in fact you do have glass, we'd then like you to repurpose that glass container that you have. If it's a glass jar with a lid on it, use it to store something, but use it for some other purpose mm -hmm. as opposed to, to um, just, you know, recycling it or actually disp disposing of it. The third option would be, we'd like you to take that piece of glass that you have and actually take it to one of our two drop-off centers. In that same light, we're actually trying to expand the number of drop-off centers throughout the county. We're going to look at that geographically, and we're trying to figure out whether we can add three more drop-off locations. And so if we're successful in locating them, and again, this is a work in progress, we would locate those where it's convenient for people in their normal habits of their life, and also within two miles of most people's homes, just because the county is so small. And then as a last option to manage glass, if you can't take it to one of the drop-off centers, we would ask that you put it in the black cart as opposed to the blue cart. Just take it from the blue cart where you're putting it now and put it in the black cart again because that's the most economical answer, understanding they both end up in landfills anyways. But there is one difference that I just learned about with the, the trash that you put into black carts is that most of Arlington's trash in, black, in the black carts um, goes to a waste to energy facility. Can you talk about that for a second? Um, in the late 80s, actually 1988, the county opened a waste energy facility. It processed about 350,000 tons of trash annually. It basically is, it resides in Alexandria, so the city of Alexandria and Arlington County partnered together to build this facility. It's operated by Covanta Energy. And so our trash, and most of the trash from both the city and the county, is taken there and actually they burn the trash and through you know, superheated steam they turn turbine generators and then they convert the waste into electricity. And so that's what happened. It's about rated at about a 23 megawatt facility, um, which is enough power to you know, energize about 23,000 homes on an annual basis. Cool. Uh, we have a question coming in on Facebook, and that's going back to the recycling drop-off okay. at the Trade Center. Where exactly is the drop-off there? Is it the, is it the purple cart that's next that is, to the compost? That is correct. So we have become part of what is called the Purple Can Club. <laughs> we partner with Fairfax, the city of Alexandria, and Prince William County. So we all have a similar type program where we're allowing people to drop off glass. So at the two drop-off centers, one is at the Quincy Street Park near the Central Library. The other one is in the Trade Center on South Taylor Street. You'll see a box there that's predominantly green but have a purple front or magenta front with some racing stripes on it. Look for the magenta boxes, and those are where we want you to put glass. They are signed for glass only. Earlier you mentioned as part of the, um, sort of the hierarchy of you know, buying less glass, possibly opting for plastic instead, but that's something that um, a lot of folks think is, is worse for the environment. But what goes into that calculation? And I, I think the reality that? is we have created a solid waste management system. So if you buy glass, we now have an option for it to be recycled, and that is through the drop-off program at our two drop-off centers. If you buy plastic, you can put it in our blue cart in our recycling system, and our recyclable plastic is, in fact, recycled. Mm -hmm. So we've gone to the MRF and checked that out. And so when you look at what you buy, I look at it from a management of the system that currently exists. And the current ex system allows you to manage recycles in your blue cart. It goes to that material recovery facility that we discussed previously, where those materials are sorted out and actually sold it as, com uh, as a commodity. Okay. Um this is where we are now in terms of the markets, right? Uh -huh. And it used to be that maybe glass was profitable to recycle. Is it likely to change again anytime I soon? I just want to clarify, glass has really never been profitable oh, in this region. It's never been because there isn't what's called a glass beneficiation plant, which will take glass and actually remake it into an aggregate or cullet that's used to either remake bottles or for insulation or other purposes. Because there isn't one of those facilities and there never has been, geographically close to this area, it's always been a challenge. And also the nature of how our MRFs or material recovery facilities have been set up, the glass stream is mixed with the residual stream and it's fairly dirty, it's just not clean mm. enough. And that's why we're collecting glass separately so it's a very clean stream of glass that then is usable for some other resource. But glass has not really ever been recycled in the region. They were using it for what's called beneficial use. They'd either, either use it for daily cover in their landfill mm. or to make roads within the landfill, but it was in still the confines of the landfill. Interesting, that's something new for, for me to, yeah. to know about this topic. Um, so it sounds like this is not just an Arlington issue. This is a regional issue. Everyone's Correct. dealing with it. It's sort of outside the scope of our 
control. Really. Right. We try to look at things and try to manage things. Prince William has made a similar decision to allow their residential community and other people to actually remove glass from their recycling stream. Alexandria is considering it, but again, they've joined the Purple Can Club along with Fairfax County. But Prince William and Arlington have both made the decision to allow the residents to remove glass from the, the blue cart. Is there any chance that the county would find some other way to collect glass recyclables other than at these designated yeah. locations? Is that in the offing? I think it's really a policy decision of the board. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is about, we can do most things, it's an expense issue. So mm -hmm. the reality is the board has to make a decision if this is important, the community has to decide this is a value of ours, and then say, let's figure out how to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And again, we're trying to figure out whether transportation-wise we have to haul it a longer distance to uh, where yeah. it would, because it has other environmental impacts. It has road traffic impacts, it has emission impacts, so those are the kind of concerns considerations we always evaluate. Yeah, okay. Um, I want to transition a little bit to some of the other thing, other questions related to recycling because um, there's a lot more that, yes. there's a lot more considerations that I think you probably deal with all the time uh, and that we try to get the message out about here in the county in terms of what you should and shouldn't recycle. So um, maybe a couple of hot items that I'm aware of. I mean, one thing that I know that I used to put in the recycling bin was um, plastic bags. Yes. And that's like a, that's a big no-no, right? That's a big no-no. Um, it's considered a tangler in the process. So when you have plastic bags or anything put in plastic or any plastic bag that ends in, a, in the blue cart, basically it goes through a process at the material recovery facility, which is a series of conveyors and stars and other pieces of equipment that are trying to deconstruct this material. So what happens mm. is a plastic bag gets wrapped around that equipment, oh, and then they have to manually remove that. So it really has to require them to shut down the operation of the facility. It's very costly, it's very time consuming. So that's just one thing, particularly plastic bags are not good. But plastic bags that are made of either number two plastic or number four plastic, which is high density poly, um, ethylene or low density polyethylene, those things can be taken back to grocery stores and those things are converted mm. into Trex plastic lumber and other things like that. Oh, so those ha that's how they're being reused. Anything that is not on our recycle right list, we want you to stick with aluminum cans and steel cans and paper, cardboard, all those things are on there. Plastics are in good shape. Um, so we want you to focus on recycling right. So garden hoses, rubber items, leather, <laughs> electronics, all those things are bad from our perspective because they're just considered contaminants in the process. So we have sent information, we'll continue to send information such as brochures like this. We're gonna be sending another one out in the month of June, which is gonna talk about glass, but more importantly, it's gonna talk about recycling right. And we just ask people to read that and actually follow the instructions that are provided. And that will give you the best guidance on what should, in fact, go in the blue recycling cart. And on that material, um, are there instructions for how clean the things are that need to go in there? Because I know sometimes it's a pain to clean out some of the containers. Right. The MRFs, or the material recovery, have asked us specifically to say they want clean material. Yeah. And so if it's something that you can't clean out, I just advise you to put it in the trash. And we used to say sort of just swirl it out in water, but it would still have peanut butter residual in it. That's that the main one for me. <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. We want yeah. you, if it's contaminated with food, because it does create a vector problem at these facilities. And when they're selling that material, if someone says, this smells like peanut butter, that's not a good thing. It's not a clean yeah. commodity. Okay. So we want people to focus on actually, focus on cleaning the material before they actually put it in a blue cart. Recycling right and recycling clean. Great. Um, Oh, and one other thing that I, I know some people were asking about, even little things like the caps on jars yes. and, and things like that, what should happen with that? So again, what the general guidance is, if it's under your, the size of your fist, it's gonna fall through the system as a series of conveyors and screens that are part of the material recovery process for system. So those items, unless they're attached to something else, such as the plastic cap on your plastic bottle, mm -hmm. no individual plastic cap should be put in the system because they are gonna fall through the system and end up in a residual line. Oh, interesting. So we want you to clean up wow, that. There's really so much behind recycling and, and doing it right. Um, I know we have some resources online, uh, and I think the web address is on the screen here. But do you yes, we do have a, an aspect on the recycling page called Recycle Right. So if you have a question about a particular commodity as to whether it should be recycled or put in the trash or potentially you know recycled as electronics waste, if you can just go in there again, it's the Recycle Right tab on the recycle the web page and you can put in the various items. And we try to update that as we get new information to make sure it's as clear for people as possible. There are always gonna be these items that we're just not sure about. If you have this plastic film, is the right plastic film, but generally plastic film can be retaken back to the grocery stores. 
Um, I would also say as far as what are troubling commodities are mixed material commodities. You know, they have plastic and cardboard together. Those things need to go in the trash because um, it's just a problem. So where does it go on the website is what you're looking for to go back and actually figure out where you should take these materials if you're unsure. Great. Um, is there anything else that you feel like uh, residential recyclers in Arlington, or anything, any other message you yeah. would want to give folks? I want to thank people. I think Arlington has done a great job, and they continue to be very responsive to the messaging. For the calendar year 2018, we, were, we have reported to the state a recycling rate of 50.1%. That was up 1.1% from the previous year. And it's all a credit to the residents of Arlington County listening, paying attention, and doing the right thing. So recycling programs aren't successful unless the residents actually do their part. And so we've been very successful. We just ask you to be very cognizant now as the markets change and the requirements change. They are a little bit more stringent. They want you to do a little bit more. They want you to focus a little bit more on making sure that item that you're putting in your blue cart is in fact recyclable. So in the old adage, it used to be when in doubt, throw it in. Now it's when in doubt, leave it out. And that's what we want you to, to do. So again, if you're unsure, you should go ahead and put it in the black card as opposed to the blue card. And that just really maximizes the benefit that's of correct. the actions that folks are taking to recycle. Yes, sort of, absolutely. You avoid the, the downsides that are exactly. caused by over-recycling in a way. So be sure as opposed to unsure. Yeah, okay. Well, I think uh, we've covered a lot of ground here and uh, answered a lot of questions that I think folks have about glass recycling and recycling in general in Arlington. And like I said when we started, this is something that's very important to Arlingtonians. And so we want to make sure that you have the right information to go out there and do, do the most that you can do um, to make sure that we're recycling right here in our community. Absolutely. So Eric, thanks so much for well, joining us here today. And um, stay tuned. We're going to have more live chat Q&As here on Facebook uh, coming up in the next few months. So continue answering your questions about county government and issues facing us. So uh, thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you again. Bye.